Now we're going to look at the titration of a strong acid with a strong base. We're going to do two types of titrations. First, we'll start with the strong acid, strong base. And we're going to try to create this titration curve, which means we're going to start with a strong acid, and then we're going to slowly add some strong base to it. And we're going to calculate the pH after you know, a few a, a di different amounts of um, different volumes of base are added. So there's four regions that we're going to have to calculate pHs for. There's four different um, types of calculations we'll have to do. So the first one is when you're just starting off with clove. So in the first part, you're just starting off with a strong acid. All right, so here, zero mils of base are, are added. So we have, this is, this is basically point one here, where you have just a strong acid. How do you find the pH of a strong acid? done that a million times, right? pH of a strong acid is just negative log of the hydronium concentration. And if you have a, a strong acid, well, pH is just negative log of hydronium. But if you have a strong acid, then the hydronium concentration is equal to the strong acid concentration. So that first calculation should be pretty easy. You're just going to do negative log of whatever the strong acid concentration is, and that's your pH. You don't have any volume of base added. You just have your strong acid. Uh, in the second region now, you start adding some strong base. But you haven't reached the equivalence point yet. So it's before you reach the equivalence point and just after you add some sodium hydroxide. So you're going to have a little excess acid. So this is your excess acid section. Excess acid. So how do you figure out the pH when you have extra acid? So the pH is going to go up, right? It's going to go up a little bit because you just added some base. So it's getting a little bit more basic. It's still on the acidic side, probably. Um, but you haven't reached the equivalence point yet. So how do you know when you're at the equivalence point? That's when the moles of the acid equal the moles of the base. So at this point, you've just added a little bit of base. You have a few moles of base added here, uh, but you have more acid than base. So what you want to do is calculate the moles of your acid. Now, remember how to calculate moles if you know molar concentration and volume? Molar concentration and volume. So I know the molar concentration. I know the volume. I'm going to get my moles of my acid. Do the same thing for the base. I know the molar concentration. I know the volume of the base. Because this is what's going to change throughout the problem. This is the only thing that's changing: the volume of the base. Um, your initial moles of, uh, actually, your initial moles of acid. Once you calculate that once, you're going to use that again for the rest of the, the problems. That's not going to change because you're not adding any more acid. You're just adding the base. The molar concentration of the base isn't going to change. Uh, not the initial molar concentration. Just the volume at, at each step. You're going to do uh, step one, two, three, and four. So at step two, you have a certain volume of base that you're adding, and you're trying to figure out what the pH is at that, at that point. So find the moles of your excess acid. You're going to take the moles of the acid minus the moles of the base. So these are your initial moles, right? This is initial moles of acid, and those are initial moles of base. Those are initial and initial. And take the difference. Uh, if you ever get a negative number when you're when you're taking the difference here, then you're on the other side of the, the um, equivalence point. Then you have more base than acid. You're going to do the same thing once we get up there. But you shouldn't ever get a negative number for the moles of your excess acid. And so after you find your moles of your excess acid, you want to find the molar concentration. Because remember, we're always looking for pH. pH is negative log of hydronium. And if you have a strong acid, then this is true, right? Hydronium concentration is equal to the strong acid. So you're trying to figure out how much extra strong acid do you have. So your molar concentration just moles over liters. Make sure you find the total volume. The total volume is going to be the volume. Uh, it's going to be the liters of uh, base plus the liters of acid. Make sure it's in liters. All right, that's your total volume. Total volume is the acid plus the base. The volume of the acid plus the volume of the base. Uh, once you figure that out, that's the molar concentration of strong acid, which is also equal to the molar concentration of the hydronium ion, and then just negative log of hydronium, and there you have your excess acid. Now, the third part in this titration curve, if we just scroll up here really quick, is the equivalence point. And this is probably the easiest point, right? The equivalence point. What happens at the equivalence point? Moles of the acid equal the moles of the base, right? So moles acid equal moles of the base. All right, and so they completely neutralize each other, and the pH is just going to be 7. So all you have to do is calculate the moles of the acid, calculate the moles of the base. If they are the same, then the pH is going to be 7. It only works for strong acid, strong base titration. This is not going to work for a weak acid or in a strong base or, or the other way around. Uh, we'll do that problem later. And then the fourth region is when you have excess base. So this is excess base, excess base. 
And so similar to when you had excess acid, you want to find moles of acid, moles of base. But this time you want to subtract, there we go, moles of the acid, moles of the base. Subtract the, the acid from the base. So you're going to have more base. Uh, then find the molar concentration, base, moles of base divided by the total volume. So remember that total volume is the, is the volume of the acid plus the volume of the base at that point. And then uh, you find that's equal to the, this is a strong base, it's going to equal the hydroxide ion concentration. Uh, find a pOH, that's negative log of hydroxide, and then subtract that from 14 to get the pH. So at each point in this titration curve, all you're trying to do is find the pH. Uh, so there's three readings. So the first one, you just have a strong acid. It's just negative log of that strong acid concentration, because the strong acid concentration equals hydronium. In the second part, you want to find moles of acid, moles of base. Subtract the base from the acid, divide by the total volume, negative log of that, and that's your pH. Uh, for the third one, you find moles of acid, moles of base. They're going to be equal. The pH is just going to be 7. And then in step four, you want to find moles of acid, moles of base. Now you're going to have more base. So subtract the acid from the base, divide by the total volume, negative log of that will give you a pOH, and then find a pH after that. So at each step, except for the first one, you're always looking for the moles of the acid and the moles of the base. You see how that's, that's the, the first thing you want to do at any given step, except for the first one. Uh, moles of acid, moles of base. If you have more acid, you haven't reached the equivalence point yet. If, you, if the moles of the acid equal the moles of the base, you're at the equivalence point. If you have extra base, then you are beyond the equivalence point. So we'll do a real example uh, next.